Hey, I'm Cameron. And I'm Will. And this is Shoot First Questions Later, an informative and mildly entertaining photography podcast with a raw Aussie flavour. And today we're joined by a very special guest, fellow photographer and coffee addict, Elizabeth Gad, who is tuning in now all the way from BC in Canada. Hello, Lizzie. Thanks for joining us. Hello, hello. Thanks for having me. It's an honor to be here. No, it's a pleasure to have you on. We've been meaning to have you on the show for a long time now, so it's good to finally uh, make things happen. Yeah, I think we first sort of came up with the idea like a few months back, actually, and we all talked about it and talked about it, and now it's finally happy, uh-huh. happening and we're super stoked. And as it turns out, you've got a cold, you, you tell us. That. So by the time we finally got you on the show, you've got a cold, but um, you sound fine anyway. Yeah, I, I'm glad I, I sound fine, just... Sipping a hot toddy and trying to act normal. <laughs> okay. oh, you got to clarify what a, what a hot toddy is. <laughs> it, it, uh, it's um, it's got lemon and honey and just a little bit of whiskey. Helps keep the throat <laughs> nice and calm. You know, it's all good. <laughs> all right. <laughs> <laughs> That's good stuff. Well, Lizzie, for you and maybe anyone who hasn't listened to the podcast before, um, shoot first questions later. So uh, we're going to talk about what we've been photographing in the past week or so. And then later on in the episode, um, we'll ask you a few questions. But let's have a chat about what we've done in the last week. Um, I might kick it off with you, Lizzie. Have you taken any photos or been working on any photos or maybe even come up with any ideas oh. for photos? Well, I was in the last, uh, well, let's see, not the last week, the last month I was in the UK, in Ireland, Scotland, and England um, for another photographer friend's wedding. So in Ireland, I actually took a few photos, which um, felt really good because I haven't taken any for a while over the summer. It's good to hear that you've you've got the camera out again. Yeah. So there is this one castle, Dunluce Castle, I think it's called. Um, which I've shot at before and then I was inspired to shoot there again when we went back and actually it was kind of funny when I was shooting there I was setting up a shot and no one else was there my friends were like on the other side of the castle somewhere Uh, the sun was setting it was quite nice I had a small window of light to get this shot and just as I had set it up um, out of nowhere these other photographers came up from the parking lot somewhere behind me and they were coming right to my spot and one of the girls was in a wedding dress so I was like oh man they're gonna they're gonna take my spot and obviously it's more important for them she's in a wedding dress so uh they came up and you were photobombed by the bride well we were kind of making eye contact and then they asked if it was okay if they took a photo there and of course I said yes go ahead so I was waiting for them and then when they introduce themselves and I said, hi, I'm Lizzie. And it turns out right away they knew who I was. And apparently they were there because they had seen the last photo that I took there <sighs> almost three years ago. Oh, no way. So it was That's so insane. weird. Yeah. Wow. I was I quite you... blown away by that. <laughs> oh, instantly uh, red, <laughs> red in the face. I can just imagine you in that situation. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm sure I was very... That's crazy because you don't even live there or anything and these people still ran no, into yeah, you. They, yeah, that was only the second time I had ever been there since that first time when I took the first photo. So, yeah, super weird, super random, but cool. That's amazing. <laughs> That's awesome. So that was one of a few occasions you are able to uh, take a few photos on this little trip? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I took a few photos, not as many as I would have hoped, but... No, I'm sure that will good. change soon. No, good to hear. Look forward <laughs> yeah. to seeing the rest of them. What about uh, you, Cameron? Um, f- photos. Um, no, I suppose I haven't taken any the last week or so. Actually, it's been more than a week since we've um, since we've asked this question. But I've been mainly working on um, processing photos, so just in that headspace at the moment and. Uh, all still from New Zealand, just going to put together a, a little book and and whatnot. Um, but yeah, that's been consuming most of my time anyway. Um, yeah, but still enjoying enjoying the process. 
yeah, definitely. Um, I think it's really been fun to see when I when I first got back from New Zealand and I started um, processing the photos, and then I've I've left them and then come back and left them and come back, and they're changing every time. Like the whole the mood of um, what of how I've been processing the headspace as time's gone on. I've sort of started to see different things in the photos and therefore like interpreted them differently and it's coming, it's showing through in my processing. So I'm, I'm heaps excited to see where they are at the moment. It's funny when I do that and let time go on, my collection of photos that I'm working on just gets smaller and smaller because I slowly start deleting them, <laughs> which I actually did the <laughs> other day. I was like, hang on, that just sucks now. <laughs> That's that's the marina- that's the marination process. You got to let it marinate and um, you really make sure you like it before you put it out there. But yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing your shots from New Zealand because that's been seems like an eternity ago. Do you let your photos marinate, Lizzie? Um, funnily enough, I don't very often. When I take the photo and start editing it, I either get really excited about it and want to post it as soon as it's done. I'll usually like let it marinate for a day or so. Um, and then sometimes when I'm editing the photo, if I don't like it, I'll either just forget about it or sometimes I still post it, like debate whether or not I'll post it. And then I do. And then often I end up liking it months later. And like, for example, there's one I posted years ago. I think I called it the leaf thief, um, where I'm running away from, the tree with these leaves kind of falling behind me. Um, I added it so it looks like the leaves are following me. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) Um, But yeah, that one I actually really didn't care for. It was just experimenting with it. That must have been one of your first. So if anyone's not familiar with Lizzie's work, I was going to mention this later, but might as well mention it now. Lizzie is the queen of self-portraits. However, I don't really – it's hard to justify what you do and really make people appreciate it because you've been doing this a very long time and shooting self-portraits these days is very common or just shooting a uh, human element in nature, in landscapes. Mm-hmm. It's almost super saturated and overdone, but I've always uh, – you and I are friends now, but before we were friends, I was a fan of your work because it was so unique and really stood out to me, and this is going back like five years before – I was hardly seeing anyone do what you do. So essentially, yeah, self-portraits within nature, just kind of combining sublime light and just beautiful moments with unique, uh, I guess, po- yeah, like kind of conceptual, unique poses. Yeah. Um, yeah, and just beautiful detail for light. So if anyone's not <laughs> following Lizzie as you're listening to this, um, I recommend pausing the podcast right now and quickly looking up Elizabeth Gadd. Um, her work <laughs> just so that people the <laughs> listeners can uh, kind of appreciate what we're rambling on about and understand oh thanks I appreciate it Will <laughs> Lizzie um, I was a original um, Flickr fan of yours you know back all those many years when um, yeah when you know Flickr was really sort of pumping like a bit more of a community than it is now <laughs> That whole like scene in Flickr, oh, that was my jam. Like I couldn't take photos like you guys. But. <laughs> All right, Will. So you've had a pretty big week, I think. You've been up in Iceland. What did you get up to? Yeah, huge week. Uh, running one of three photography workshops in Iceland. So I was just there for just over a week, basically. I only got home, uh, I don't even know, two days ago, perhaps. Still a little bit uh, brain fried at the moment from the 40 hours of transit. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, That's huge. A long time. Yeah, it's just silly, really. Um, but yeah, massive week. Great to uh, get back over there and show people around what is obviously such a special part of the world. And uh, yeah, even managed to get the camera out a few times. I saw you, saw some lovely northern lights. Yeah, yeah, we did. It was, uh, it's scary running workshops here because obviously everyone gets excited about the northern lights and, you know, I, it's one thing that I can't control. So I'm always just watching the weather and the forecast as close as possible. And yeah, for the night in particular that we got a really amazing display, I... um we actually change the itinerary and kind of mix things up because I wanted to maximise the guy's chance of uh, seeing it. And, um, yeah, wow. it was just one of those really 
uh, special, one of those special ones that just makes you just want to fall over and <laughs> just cry, basically. Uh, it was insane. I love it and, when that happens. Oh, and it was really brief as well. We had like two brief uh, displays, only like 10 minutes long that really just went crazy, crazy enough to get iPhone photos and for everyone to just start yahooing and just uh, questioning their existence in life, basically. That's the best. When you just can't control your emotions anymore. It's just, yeah, I, I was just <laughs> yahooing the whole time. Just, yo. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, nah, it was good. So I head back there in two weeks, actually, to run some more workshops. And I'm already excited just because of what we just had last week. So, yeah, it's been a big week, though, but it's been really fun. And I'm still sitting on, like Cameron, uh, photos from New Zealand. And I've been back to New Zealand since then. I'm sitting on a lot of photos and just kind of taking my time to edit them and doing a website upgrade and everything like that. So busy, 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 but it's good. Yeah. I can't wait to see the photos. Yeah, me either. I saw some previews <laughs> of um, your photos in Iceland. So you, you were there for like a day before the workshop and you got the Northern Lights. And um, one of those shots... I really loved, and I'm wondering if you think it's going to make the the cut for the for the release later in the year. Uh, yeah, that was crazy. I landed so after I think getting there was about 32 hours, and obviously keeping an eye on the weather because I had that one night before the workshop started just to myself. So I picked up my hire car at three in the afternoon, and I just drove three hours north to clear skies where the only clear skies were, um, in the hopes of getting the aurora. Because the um the rating the forecast was looking okay for the northern lights and um man it just worked out perfectly timing wise like just as the sun had finally set and it got dark enough I could just see that the all familiar glow of the the aurora on the horizon there and yeah managed to get a few photos which I felt so uh, spoiled you got a northern lights shot and then the sunrise the next morning at the same location was really special and yeah I think hopefully both of those photos if it's ones I'm thinking of will um make it to the website or something down the track but i haven't even i haven't even saved those they're all on the memory card still <laughs> just kind of got home and just going straight into family mode at the moment all right enough about us let's get back to lizzie and we're going to talk about the questions uh segment of this podcast and we had a couple here that uh you actually told us lizzie is a is questions that uh you get asked most often so we thought we'd give the people listening a uh, uh, chance to hear the answers to these questions uh, but actually first let's tackle some boring stuff what like camera do you use <laughs> the boring stuff yeah the uh, boring stuff I, <laughs> <laughs> I am now using a sony a7r2 um i for years i was using an old canon 60d um i think up till two years ago I was using that. It's a smaller crop sensor. Yeah, it's like the majority <laughs> of your work has just been shot on such a yeah. such a basic camera, which it just is a testament to that the fact that it's not about the gear. There we go. So all the people who are itching to know what camera Lizzie is using, Sony A seven R two. It's not some magic camera that makes all of your photos look like they were taken uh, in heaven, but just a good photographer. <laughs> oh, thanks a nice camera it works well for me yeah i mean it's pretty it's pretty tried and true really we'll we'll that's what we'll use so another question we've got for you um how did you first get into photography how i first got into photography um it was let's see over 10 years ago now uh i joined Flickr. yeah 13 14 when i started getting into it i'm 24 too Yay, same age buddies. Uh, Woo. Make you feel old. <laughs> it's okay, Well, You're only halfway to 60. It's not that <laughs> That is, I think about it every day. Anyway, all right, back to you. So, 10 <laughs> years ago, 14. Yeah, 10, 10 years ago, I joined Flickr. Um, I was mostly just taking, I was really interested in nature all my life. Uh, loved going for walks in the forest and fields, looking at the landscapes photographing the leaves and animals, my pets. And it was more around uh, seven years ago, 2010, um, or shortly before 2010, I started making more friends through Flickr who, they were around my age and uh, 
doing a lot of self-portraits, which I thought was really cool. And that inspired me to uh, try that myself. And back around that time, there was this thing that a lot of people were doing, the 365 project. Oh, yeah. And the recipe, oh, yes. the recipe for disaster. <laughs> yep. <laughs> no, not um, just recipe for re- anxiety. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, that too. <laughs> I'm actually considering doing another one, which I might touch on later, but cool. that, that might be fun in the future. <laughs> yeah, okay, all right. You heard, um, you heard it here first, everyone. <laughs> yeah, so seven years ago, for 2010, I decided to do a 365 project of self-portraits. And it wasn't really because I enjoyed taking self-portraits. I just, um, at that time, I'd been taking photos for three or four years and I knew that I wanted to be a photographer but I felt like I should do something to step outside of my comfort zone and like force myself to grow more and I didn't have any particular style or anything so I just wanted to try something new and I thought being inspired by other people on Flickr doing the same project of self-portraits I decided to jump in and do it myself and yeah it was actually it was a stressful year (laughs) but I enjoyed I enjoyed it a lot yeah and that kind of touches on the other common question people ask you is why self-portraits so I guess that that kind of sums it up I guess and so do you feel like that kind of helped you come out of your shell a little bit for sure Yeah, yeah it was during that year that I made more friends than I ever had before all online which like being the awkward introvert like myself (laughs) it's it can be (laughs) it can be hard to make friends in real life (laughs) but all these people I made friends with online and most of them like to this day are some of my closest best friends and by the end of that year it was in the very last week actually when I started taking more of the self-portraits out in the landscapes and the nature that I first loved to photograph and it was actually on the very last day of the project, day 365, that something clicked in me while I was taking a photo. I went to a special location for the last photo, one of my favorite lakes, Alouette Lake in Golden Ears Park. And it was frozen on the edges, and I kind of slipped in in a white dress that instantly froze like cardboard around me. And <laughs> the joy, <laughs> the joys of the out. Canadian winter. Oh, yes, yes. It's quite lovely. (laughs) And it was that day that I realized um, I wasn't done with self-portraits yet, and I wanted to start combining them more with the nature and landscapes that I love. So I started playing with that idea and shooting more photos in that kind of style for the next year and have just kept doing it more every year. I enjoy doing that more and traveling and finding more of the landscapes that I love and trying to photograph uh like capturing how i feel when i'm in those landscapes just kind of hard to describe but yeah that's what i was going to ask you actually uh the posing because one thing i see a lot online is when people shoot a person or um uh, themselves it can look very staged and it makes me feel uncomfortable sometimes because i can see that they were uncomfortable but with your work uh, like your pose and uh, whatever you're doing, it, it's always something different and, yeah, it's quite emotive and it looks very natural. So is that something you consciously kind of think about and try and tell a bit more of a story? Like you, you kind of mentioned then about expressing how you felt at the moment. So that kind of goes into your posing, I guess. Yeah. Um, when I often like to try to put emotion into my work and like if I'm having a more of a down day or something I'll go out and I don't really think so much about how I pose in front of the camera but I might try like a few different movements that fit my mood and I usually have the camera rolling on like the time lapse mode so it takes a photo every couple of seconds yeah that's probably a big question a lot of people wonder is how do you how do you do that and um yeah that's the easily the most uh efficient way isn't it just let the time lapse roll and yeah you can get out there and be a bit more natural (laughs) Yeah. Um, yeah, so I just let the camera roll and walk out in front of it and see see what happens. I often, yeah, I don't have anything planned. I just 
move around, sit, stand, dance, whatever comes to me in the moment. <laughs> That's awesome. Something that you said earlier really stood out to me. It's that you found your style because you were um, you pushed yourself to step outside of your comfort zone, and I feel like that is such an intense and important lesson for people who might feel like they're in that rut that um that they might feel like not sure where which direction to go um sometimes yeah pushing yourself to step outside your your yeah your norm is um can what really cement you into a style yeah for sure I don't know if I would have found the style that I'm in right now if I didn't um really push myself for that so yeah I'd say like if anybody wants to grow as a photographer, you have to push yourself. It's hard to just fall into yeah. any style. You need to keep working at it. And like, it's been 10 years since I picked up the camera and it took me all that time to get to where I am now. And most of that, I had no plan for that. It was just trying to push myself and see where I'd end up. Yeah. That's the best way to be. One thing I was going to ask you as well is, your style as we can kind of said like you cemented yourself with this certain style do you see yourself shooting the same way for the foreseeable future i i've been asking myself that question a lot this year actually i see myself shooting in this style for a while yet um but i am realizing that i'm open to letting my style change in the coming years as well um yeah I don't know what it would change into. Um, I I still have lots of ideas and a huge love for the style that I'm shooting right now. So I want to let that play out and <clears throat> just kind of see where it takes me and um, see if photography is still going to be a huge part of my future, which I hope it is. <laughs> so, yeah, it's hard to say. I'm really curious. I'm not scared of what's what could be ahead or what I might still be doing or not doing with photography. I'm just really curious to see um, what happens with it and where I feel led to go and what to do. That's such an inspiring attitude, like for me and I'm sure for so many people who just sort of, so many (laughs) listeners, um, I've just sort of, had like this epiphany realization because because while we're talking to you we're we're staring at your website and your work and when you mentioned about your when you take photos of yourself and you just stick it on timer and you go out um i feel like that's where i'm getting a lot of the emotion and like the things i feel when i look at them it's coming from your positioning and like you said you're you're just react you're walking in front of the camera and then like just um, showing us a natural reaction to this like incredible landscape and it's just like it's so I think it's so easy to connect with and put yourself in that place when you're being so so real and like so uh, so vulnerable in front of the camera is is that a was that a struggle or is it still a struggle to like put yourself at that level of vulnerability um Interestingly enough, it's never, I mean, it used to be a struggle when I started. And now that I've done this a lot, it's become a very therapeutic kind of thing. A lot of the time I'm just by myself when I'm taking these photos and I, I find it um, really calming to set up the camera and walk out there and uh, strike a pose or not pose at all, even just stand there. It's become more about just enjoying the scene that I'm in and hoping that the camera captures it half the time it does, half the time it doesn't, how I had hoped it would. Yeah. You and I got to hang out um, in Iceland a bit last year and also the Rockies. We we did a little trip together, which was awesome. And one thing that really re- stuck out to me was um, just how authentic you are with your work and the fact that, um, you know, when you're out shooting – we had a lot of amazing moments and they were so amazing that you pretty much didn't shoot <laughs> because <laughs> you were just kind of overwhelmed and you kind of preferred just to take it all in and it really blew me away. It was such an artistic approach um, to photography and it was really refreshing because I've 
I've been around a lot of other people and even myself sometimes where you can kind of really forget about the beauty of the moment and get a bit too caught up in the photo and you don't take the time to appreciate what's going on before your eyes and yeah that was one thing that surprised me about you well it didn't surprise me I just didn't consider it but yeah there were so many moments where like you probably went home with like hardly any shots on your memory card but the ones that you did take were I, I think the I ones had like counted. five or six total ones from the week <laughs> <laughs> yeah like a week in the Canadian Rockies and yeah you just come back with five <laughs> <laughs> yeah that that was definitely more and more over the last few years I've been enjoying the experience more than taking the photos yeah and I think that show it shows in your work it has that authentic feel to it and you can tell there's a passion yeah. there and the emotion and yeah it's just good it's refreshing and I think we need a lot more of that in this day and age <laughs> uh, in this day oh, yeah. and age in this, yeah that's right I, I didn't even mean to say it that time we're gonna get the t-shirts <laughs> in this day and age I actually caught myself almost saying that like a little while back but I thought of you Will and I didn't end up saying it I should have though Earlier, you said that you are quite often alone when you take photos. How do you feel about taking photos um, alone versus uh, with uh, a group of people? It's an entirely different experience, for sure. Um, With the whole group of people, I kind of feed into the thought that people are watching me. And I've always preferred um, when I'm in nature to just be alone or just with like a couple of close friends or something. And even then I often wander off by myself and take photos by myself. I feel I connect more to that moment when I'm alone or with my dog around. He, he's always good company. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's worth mentioning uh, Pepper. Oh, Pepper. I started a secret album called Dog Bombed and all <laughs> photos that he's photobombed. I'm going to release it one day soon. That's awesome. He, he's in all the all the good photos. <laughs> I feel like that'd be a good, um, like, funny book idea. Like, I would give that to my girlfriend for as a present, just like <laughs> a, a book of a dog photo bombing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, back to the shooting with others versus alone. I, th- that's something that I definitely need. I think that's stepping outside of my comfort zone because I'm the opposite of you. I much more enjoy taking photos with other people. And I really struggle to like um, to go out on my own and start taking photos, which is weird because like I, I'm a person that you know enjoys alone time, but for some reason I just sort of think I shoot better or something with others. But I'm definitely inspired to sort of challenge that and step outside my comfort zone. There, yeah, it is a challenge because I find I am more inspired to get out there when I am with other people that are pushing me but then when it comes to actually shooting when I'm out there I always feel more inspired when I'm alone so getting out there like hiking up a mountain or something by myself it's enjoyable but it's harder to push myself to go do that when I have no one along with me so it's kind of a toss-up like I can either go with a bunch of people and maybe not take photos or or sometimes I do take photos Um, bit of a delicate balance hey yeah, yeah. It, it's an interesting balance. <laughs> Still trying to learn it. <laughs> Never-ending process. Um, a lot of your work is kind of from where you live uh, near Vancouver, British Columbia. Um, I wanted to ask you, is there anywhere that you would like to go and shoot in the future? Not Because you've done a lot of like solo travel work. Uh, with not photography in mind. Um, Do you want to touch on that, actually? So you went to Spain, was it last year? Or was that this year? I can't remember. Yeah, it was last year, um, a year year and a half ago. I decided that I wanted to go on my first real solo trip um, just for the experience, not even to photograph it. So I didn't bring a camera or anything. I went to walk the Camino de Santiago in Spain uh, 900 kilometers of it in 29 days. <laughs> That's just so artistic, though. Like that, he does that. Like, yeah. it's just so cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not even sure what pushed me to do that, but I just, I got this feeling. I think it was at the end of January when I realized I really want to do this. So I booked the tickets, and a month later, flew out there and did it. And it was really 
hard at times, but also really rewarding. Um, and I would definitely do it again. Uh, just being out there, starting each day, not knowing what I was doing, except that I had to get up and walk, not even knowing how far I had to walk. I just had to walk until like the end of the day and see where I'd end up. And with nothing else to think about, like um, nothing without my camera, didn't have to think about the camera. I could just think about life and chat with anybody that I, I would meet along the way. It really taught me to be in the present moment. And I loved doing that trip as a solo trip because I could, it felt easier to talk to anyone who I met along the way. And it felt easy to do what I wanted to do at whatever time I wanted to do. If I wanted to take a nap in a field at like right after lunch or something, wouldn't have to have friends wait for me. And <laughs> so it was really nice. And it, that trip taught me a lot about myself and about the other people I met along the way. And I feel like the connections I made with other people along the way, I wouldn't have had if anyone else was with me. I felt a lot more open to learning about everyone around me when I was there by myself. So yeah, that I love trips like that. And since then, I've always, I think I'm going to try to go on at least one solo trip a year, maybe not that long, but like up to a week long. Like this year, I did the uh, West Coast Trail by myself, which was only 80 kilometers as opposed to 900. <laughs> so, a little bit shorter. Making us feel so <laughs> fat and lazy yeah. on the computer chairs here right now. Uh, no, but that's so good. So good for the creative side of things as well i always feel so refreshed after that you're one to get kind of stuck in a bit of a rut yes oh yes i've known you for a while now and yeah you're pretty much shooting maybe what three months out of the entire year maybe <laughs> and then the rest is yeah. kind of yeah doing <laughs> just doing what you do um do you want to touch on like creative ruts and what's you know yeah where where are you at <laughs> the last few years I seem to have been going through a creative rut that usually starts around like January up through March or April. Um, I guess for like five years or so now, I barely pick up the camera during that time. I'm not sure what it is. It's, is it a wet? Is it the weather? Yeah, the climate over there. Yeah, the the weather, which is silly because my favorite weather is the dark, moody weather, <laughs> but it does get you down. It's it's cold and dreary and. Um, and I guess, yeah, I can't really say what it is, but during those times, I find it hard to pick up the camera and to motivate myself to go out and shoot. Um, so the last couple of years have been especially hard in that way, which is one of the reasons why I've started doing, uh, like that's one of the reasons I went to do the Camino in Spain um, when I found myself in that kind of rut that year. I felt like I should do something new and out of my comfort zone again um just forget about the camera for a while and uh motivate myself through other means so I was really glad for that when I came back from that I felt completely refreshed and I was able to jump back into taking photos for a while yeah um for for the rest of that year until the next winter game <laughs> <The> cycle <laughs> <laughs> yep and this last winter um Again, I'm not sure what it is, but I haven't found that motivation for most of the year this time. It's drawn on a lot longer than it usually does. Yeah, I do feel like it's been a while um, since we've seen much come from you, like within the last 12 months especially. Yeah, it's it's interesting because I thought I'd be taking a lot of photos over the summer, and I haven't really, and I want to change that. I'm feeling now the creative energies I'm feeling are coming back and like tomorrow I'm planning to go shooting um, in the morning and I have lots of new ideas for this fall and winter, but it's interesting to me that it's taken this long for the creative energy to come back to me. And I'm not sure what it is that's held it back, but maybe, um, maybe it's not a bad thing I've been thinking as well. It's, yeah. I think it's nice to take that break and kind of take a step back and, look at it differently i think it's um, keeping your motives pure as well and your art and it, yeah you know you're not forcing anything that would probably come through in your work i guess yeah it's just not your character to do that yeah 
we kind of we kind of live in a time like you can get away with not necessarily shooting that much. I know for me lately, I've been shooting mm-hmm. uh, regularly, but I don't really release any new work for months now because I just like to sit on things and kind of put it all out as a whole new series at once. And it doesn't really matter because as far as like social media goes or anything like that, you can just put old photos up because photos are meant to be viewed more than once. And I feel like that's – you don't really post much either, but when you do, if it's an older (laughs) shot, it's like, sweet, it's good. I want to see the stuff. So it doesn't necessarily matter that you might not be out shooting on a daily basis anyway. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And I think taking this time off, it is giving me time to – put my thoughts and energy into new areas of life that matter more or like trying to focus more on family or where I need to put more thoughts into um, friendships and coffee and coffee, coffee. Yes. Oh yes. My, my relationship with coffee is strengthened a lot over the summer. That's all that matters. (laughs) Uh, Looking forward um, is I know for me, like I shoot nature, I shoot landscapes and my canvas is the world and mountain peaks and certain locations that I would love to explore and get off the beaten path and try and create. Is there anywhere for you that you're inspired to, to maybe check out and see if you can create like any, any locations or countries or anything? Yeah. So this is purely photography now, no 80 kilometer walks or anything with no camera. This is <laughs> strictly photography. No, for, purely for photography, although there would be quite a, quite a walk involved um i really want to go up to the yukon next summer i was ho- kind of hoping to do that this year but wasn't able to get it together in time but next summer i'd love to spend a month in the yukon um in august and spend a lot of that time backpacking so again like long hikes but for photography reasons um there is i've been uh google mapping a lot of the areas in the mountains in the tombstone region i would love to spend a few weeks camping around that area in august when it's getting all golden orange and yellow awesome Uh, it would be so pretty (laughs) now lizzie we're gonna get into the hard questions this is really deep stuff do you live in an alternate reality where uh the physics of uh dress movement doesn't exist your (laughs) photos the dress is just always perfectly placed is that something you have to work very hard for? It's it's a good sign of your attention to detail. Um, most of those photos are by a complete fluke. Ah, uh, <laughs> exposed. It's got your journalism. Like like I said before, I I like to put the camera on like time lapse mode, take a photo maybe every one or two or three seconds. And I'll go out there, like if the wind is picking up my dress, there'll be like a hundred bad photos and then one really good photo where everything looks perfect. That's how I want it. So, um, yeah, I'm afraid I I don't have any like magical explanation. When you do that, you you manually focus, don't you, on where you're going to be? Yeah. I think, yeah. You just look where you're going to stand and then manually set the focus in that area and that's where you'll be basically. Yeah. And and if it's too hard to focus in that area, then I get Pepper to go sit there for me and I'll focus on him. <laughs> oh, is, Pe- is Pepper with you right now? He yeah. is with me right now. He He's laying down beside me. He's such a obedient <laughs> dog. I'm sure a lot of people listening are familiar hey, with Pepper. Do you think he can, can he, like I, I can, I know he does a lot of things on cue. Can he bark for us or is that asking Pepe. too much? Pepper, you want to howl? <laughs> Ah, <laughs> uh, that's so cool. That's awesome. Sometimes when I go photo shoot out in the forest and mountains, I'll just start howling with them, and it it feels wild. It's quite beautiful. So a lot of your photos looks like you're in a potentially pretty uncomfortable position. So like standing on super pointy rocks barefoot, or you're half <laughs> submerged in a what I imagine is freezing cold lake. How do you motivate yourself to to put put yourself in these positions which frankly they they make the photo like what uh these positions but it must be tough you know to get in there and do it especially in a dress you're probably freezing yeah it the worst part is thinking about it and thinking should i do it or should i just go home by the cozy fire and eat some chocolate instead um (laughs) but 
like 99% of the time, whenever I've pushed myself and gone out there and done it, like gone waist deep in freezing lakes or standing on rocky frozen beaches in bare feet, it's always been worth it in the end for the photos, even if they don't turn out. But in that moment, once I'm out there, just being in that moment, it's oddly enough, I kind of can't feel the pain. I just feel so wrapped up in that moment in time that I can't really feel anything else. And then it's always right after when I'm back at the camera and trying to put on my shoes again and I realize how frozen and terrible I feel. <laughs> but while I'm out there, it always feels so worth it. And then usually the photos end up being well worth it as well. So I use that to remind myself whenever I see a situation where I think, oh man, if I stand on the edge of that cliff in a dress in the freezing wind, that could be really beautiful, but it could be really cold. But in the past, most of the photos have turned out pretty decent, so I should just go do it. So I I try to motivate myself in that way that most of the time it's always felt worth it. Yeah. <laughs> do you have a moment... Uh whether it was uncomfortable or just amazing that you instantly think of, like a, like maybe you were in Iceland under the Northern Lights or back home in Canada, what's your moment that you'll never forget, your, your most awe-inspiring moment um, out in nature? <sighs> there's, there's a lot. One that comes to mind uh, last year, last summer, um, in, on this mountain, Golden Ears, which I can see from my house. Um, it's one of my favorite mountains. <laughs> so I feel really drawn to it because I feel like it's in my backyard. I kind of feel like it's my mountain. It's not my mountain, but I, I like to <laughs> pretend it is. Um, and I try to climb up to the summit of it uh, every year for the past several years now. And it's a pretty decent hike. takes about six hours to get to the peak. Um Last year, I went up with a buddy of mine, Shane Black, and when we got up there, we were going to stay two nights, and I had all my camera gear, and we stayed the first night, and then the second day came, and during that second day, all this fog and clouds started coming in around the peak, um, which was blocking a lot of the view, and a lot of people would have been upset, but I I love the fog, and um the drama that it adds to the landscape. So I was excited about it, but I still didn't feel um, the motivation that I needed to take a photo. And it was cold, really cold. Uh, but I was watching my friend Shane. He was wandering all over the mountaintop area taking photos. And I think it was towards the end of the afternoon, we were about to head back to our tents across on the other side of the mountain. And Shane asked me if I had taken a photo, and I said no. And he said, it was something along the lines of, you should take a photo before you go back to the tent. So I, I kind of felt pressured to do it. So I was like, okay, I'm going to go do this. And there's still a, a lot of the snow snow on the mountain. Um, and I saw there was this rock in the far distance and this fog that was going around the mountain peaks behind the rock. And I decided to get to that rock. I had to across a lot of snow fields to get there. Um, so Pepper was by my side the whole time, which is good company. And the fog was getting thicker and thicker. And I got to the rock after sliding down like a lot of steep snow fields. And I was completely soaked through and freezing. Pepper was there as well. Yeah, yeah. Pepper was there as well. Um, he, he's a great hiking buddy. He's like a mountain goat. He can do everything way better than I can do. <laughs> I was taking this photo. I was kind of hopping back and forth between this rock ledge um in a I put on my gold dress and the fog kept getting thicker on the mountains behind me and after I think it was 20 minutes or so of just being there and hopping back and forth and trying to get a good photo um the fog got so thick it completely socked everything in and I couldn't see more than 10 or 15 meters ahead anywhere around around me and it stayed like that all through the next night and then after I took what I hoped would be a good photo, um, Pepper and I had to walk back to the side of the mountain, scrambling through these steep snow drift things and try not to get lost. Pepper actually led me back, so I was glad he was there because I couldn't see anything in the fog. Oh, wow. 
um, yeah, I got back and, <laughs> and it, I was, I still didn't know if the photo turned out well or not. Um, I felt very unmotivated that day. I, I loved, I was enjoying everything around me, but I didn't feel motivated to take the picture. But when I got home, and actually this was one that I let marinate for quite longer than probably any other photo that I've ever let marinate. <laughs> um, it was about a month later when I finally started finishing editing it and realized it was one of my favorites I've ever taken. That's and that's also helped me realize, yeah, it's made me realize that um, like how cold I was and I was kind of scared I wouldn't find my way back to the other side of the mountain. But um yeah for how unmotivated I was I still stuck through and took this photo which turned out to be one of my favorite photos of all time now yeah. and that encourages me like the future when I feel stuck if I go ahead and do it it's usually always worth it in the end yeah that's what I say um it's nowhere near as extreme as that but even just waking up for the sunrise I wake up and check the sky every morning and some people are like flabbergasted by that and I'm like well it, I don't remember a time I regretted heading out for a sunrise I probably don't photo, more more often than not I won't photograph it but I still don't have a bad day be, like I generally my day is better if I get up early and just be outside in nature or whatever it's, it's just a good reminder um, and for you in that situation as well sometimes it shows that well all of your work really like kind of you need to suffer a little bit and it but that effort it definitely comes through in the work you can just tell yeah that efforts in, but you know there's something about suffering and photos that makes it all the better after when it turns out yeah you can look at the photo and be like oh yeah i suffered big time for that and it was worth every yeah. part <laughs> much more rewarding oh yes that's seriously my favorite photo of yours hey <laughs> like hands down oh thanks I've been looking at that one thinking, where was that? Because, yeah, it really looks like the Dolomites and mountains in the background. Oh, that's sweet. Such <laughs> it, a good shot. It does, yeah. That's in Golden Ears as well, is it? That's in Golden Ears. I can see that from my house. Yeah. It's it's really quite incredible, actually, because looking up at it from here, it's one perspective. But then being up in the peak area of that mountain, it's like a completely different world, actually, mm. being there. It's there's so many different little peaks and ledges and yeah it's totally different it feels like it could be on the other side of the world yeah well thanks heaps for chatting to us lizzie um one thing that i'm definitely taking away is like how inspired i am by how motivated you are by um how you feel when you're photographing you've mentioned uh like you sometimes won't take the photo if you're not feeling it and you've mentioned going out in front of the camera and just being you and uh, expressing how you feel. And I feel like that shows through so much in your work and it's uh, a really big takeaway for anyone out there who, who wants to improve their photography as well. And I know I'll definitely be taking that on board. Yeah, I actually feel really inspired now to get out and start creating. <laughs> so it's been good. It's been a good chat. Oh. <laughs> Thanks. I'm, I'm glad for that. Um, actually, there's... Uh, touching on the creative rut that I had been thinking about in the last month. And I wrote an article on that. Is it okay if I read the last paragraph that I had written on that? Absolutely. That Please do. And this uh, quite well with my thoughts. Um, all right. It's uh, recently I had heard somebody say, who was talking to another person who was in a creative rut like myself. I heard somebody say to them, put your thoughts, put it all in your work. And, when I heard that, something clicked in my brain just last month, and I realized that it's so obvious that I had my reason all along to snap back into creating, and that reason is me. My thoughts, my emotions, my excitement, sadness, guilt, peace, all of it, it's very real, it's very me. And here I often am, lying defeated in the rut, wondering why I can't summon the energy to continually create epic, mind-blowing images. When all along, I could be creating something just as important by gently pouring my feelings into my work. Photos that don't have to be amazing. They don't have to have thousands of views and likes and comments. They don't even have to be shown to anyone else. It's just me. It's just us. 
a glimpse into our souls, plain and simple and extravagant as they are. So those thoughts kind of sum up what I've been thinking lately about being stuck in a creative rut, just realizing it's really an opportunity to start focusing more on like your feelings and pouring that into your work and not thinking about where the work could go, how big it could be, just about yourself being in the work and learning about yourself. Wow. Yeah. That's... yeah that was beautiful. <laughs> I think, what what can we say from oh, that? Thanks. I think that's a perfect way to just wrap up uh, the episode. That, that was great. That, <laughs> yeah, really resonated with me. Yeah, that's the wisest thing anyone will ever say on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> In this day and age. <laughs> Uh, that's so good Lizzie thanks for your thoughts thanks for your lessons is there anything you wanted to plug before we uh, finish up to plug um, my Instagram is Elizabeth Gad that's all one word Gad is G-A-double-D well thank you so much Lizzie it's been a real pleasure thank you guys we look forward to having you on down down the track to hear about how this uh, refreshed and renewed approach to photography has uh taken you see where it's led you yeah it's been an honor being on here i'm really glad to have had this uh opportunity thank you guys uh thank you yeah and if anyone has any questions at all for our next episode please feel free to shoot those through to shoot first podcast at gmail.com or dm us on social media or anything like that And all of our show notes can be found in the description below or at our Instagram page, Shoot First Podcast, uh, where we'll have the images of everything we've talked about uh, there for you to read while you listen. Sweet as. All right. Thanks again, Lizzie. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. And we'll catch you on the next episode. See ya.